Good morning, everyone. I'm very happy to be presenting at the International Ocean Data Conference. I want to thank the organizers for having me. Uh, I only wish that I was in SOPO in person. Uh, my name is Kevin O'Brien. I am the Current Observations Coordination Group Vice Chair for Data and Information. And I want to talk today about some of the activities the OCG is involved in, including mapping the global uh, network data flows from the in-situ networks, as well as our data implementation strategy. Uh, before I go on, I would like to recognize the co-authors and the folks who have also worked on this project over the past few months. For those that may not be familiar, I think it might be worth just introducing the OCG. So the Observations Coordination Group is part of GOOSE, and its role is to coordinate the activities amongst the global in-situ networks. Uh, this includes uh, things like Argo and Ocean Science and, and the various ship networks, as well as emerging global observing networks, such as the Animal Born Oceanographic Sensors, or Anabos, and the Ocean Gliders. OCG does report directly to the Goose Steering Committee. Uh, there are several foci in the OCG terms of references. Two of those, however, are data management and standards and best practices, which are relevant to this meeting. Uh, I'm gonna talk today about two of the current data management activities that are going on, the mapping of the data flow in the global networks, as well as the development of the implementation strategy. It was about a year or so ago that uh, OCG was asked to develop some data mapping uh, network of the network data flows by the Goose Steering Committee. And so we took this on with uh, some overarching goals in mind. We really wanted to understand, uh, improve our understanding of how data and metadata are moving through the global networks and how they get into the data systems, where that data is available for users because we want to identify gaps and opportunities which are going to allow us to increase compliance with fair data principles amongst the network data services, improve the efficiencies of these global data services so we can increase the, uh, the use of the data by our stakeholders, and also we want to make sure we improve metadata flows into, into discovery tools, into things like Google and YGOS and the Ocean Data Information System Catalog, because we want people to find and use our data. Basically, we're trying to uh, raise compliance to the FAIR data principles and make our data more openly available. Um, this part of the process, you know, we hope to develop and recommend data management best practices and strategies that are compatible with other data strategy efforts that are going on, like the IODE um, data exchange data strategy and the WMO data strategy. And this is clearly helping divide, uh, guide the development of the OCG data implementation strategy itself. I should note that this is very much a work in progress and all the analysis and um, recommendations that we have are preliminary and we will be vetting these through the uh, network observing data teams. So let's go ahead and just jump right into an example of the data mapping. So here we have a, a, a sort of a typical data mapping. This is the Argo real-time example. And as you look at this diagram, as we move, if you're looking at it, we move from left to right. You can see the contributing communities that are <clears throat> sending their real-time data uh, on QC to the National Data Acquisition Centers, or the DACs, like, like Coriolis, for example. At the DACs, the data is QC'd. It is then sent to the National Met Services, which have the responsibility of encoding the data into buffer templates and sending them on to the GTS. In the case of Argo, you can see that the GTS, the real-time data, also gets sent to the mirror GDACs. So this, uh, this opens up another access path for those who may not have access to the GTS to get real-time data. And this is something that they, the, a benefit of the data mapping is that maybe people didn't know that was available and now, and now they will. But we didn't just do the data mapping for real-time data. We also are looking at delayed mode data. Uh, and again, here's the example from Argo because we wanna see where data services have been implemented and how we can improve data services uh, to increase fairness of those data access points. Uh, we also are looking at the metadata flows because we wanna ensure that complete metadata is flowing into OceanOps that the observations are well documented. And OceanOps is a key player in this because their metadata services will be the services that will connect to the YGOS, will connect to the Ocean Info Hub, and will provide this information about the instruments and the observations taken through the global networks. I promised you we could talk for hours about the various different mapping diagrams, but I wanted to jump into something that's come out of that and how we've developed some categories based on those data mappings to track progress as we move forward. Uh, we have come up with a list of eight categories. This may change. This is sort of the initial list that we're working with right now. Uh, the first one is, you know, does the network have an existing data task team that we as OCG and, and OceanOps, can we work with to implement some of these changes? If the network is involved in real-time data exchange, are they using the GTS? Are they using another format? Um, if they're using GTS, are they using the, the operational buffer templates that have been defined by the WMO? 
Um, have they identified a global data repository that we can work with for implementation of data services? Uh, metadata is really important. So do, do they have a uniform metadata content across the network? How is that metadata getting to OceanOps? Uh, we want to move away from the manual process that have dominated in the past and more towards machine-to-machine -machine processes, which will make the metadata transfer to OceanOps cleaner. Uh, do they have the preferred data services uh, at their um, locations where they're serving data to, to users? Uh, at OCG, we're, we're focused on the ERDAP data tool to provide um, FAIR-based uh, access to data um, through the networks. Uh, it's, a, it's an excellent tool, which I won't, I won't get into any, any further here, but that's the, the method we're looking to provide data access. Does the network have documented best practice data inf for their data infrastructure and their data workflows? Uh, have they identified the products or the, you know, the data products that they want to make available for the users? And so you, you can see where the, these categories lead us to develop this table, this stoplight type table, which allows us to kind of track how the networks are, are um, complying with these these categories. And it's really great to focus and see where, okay, the, those red spots is where we really need to focus some effort to improve the, the mapping and the flows of the data and metadata through the networks. And a lot of these, some of these, you know, quite a bit of these are, are are focused on metadata, but will be very useful in developing the implementation plan as we go forward. And I should note that this will be a live chart that will be updated and, you know, hopefully get more green as we go through time. So what are our next steps? Um, now that we have these mappings um, complete for most of the OG's OCG networks, what we need to do is review the mappings and the analysis and recommendations that have come out of it with the OCG networks. Uh, we have some round tables scheduled to do that in the coming future. Uh, the data mapping analysis is gonna help focus effort from OC OCG and the data test teams that exist to improve the metadata and data accessibility. And we can see from that chart where we need to put some of our efforts. Uh, we're gonna, this is gonna help develop and finalize and release the OCG data implementation strategy. Uh, moving forward, then we want to take these mappings, work with Goose, who was interested in this in the first place, IODE, who I know is interested in WMO, and others to extend the data mapping, you know, where relevant for things like how does the data flow into the marine climate data systems, uh, like World Ocean Database, is all the data getting in there, is maybe not the QC data getting in there, which data gets into those products. How's the flow of metadata into the Otis catalog, uh, the YGOS, et cetera? How are we linked to the Goose Regional Alliances and the BioEco community, which is becoming more, playing a more prominent role in the ocean in situ uh, observations? And lastly, we want to make sure that we can integrate the OCG implementation strategy with Ocean Info Hub work that's going on, the Ocean Data Information System, and also the US UN Decade Coordination. There's, the very, there's several UN Decade activities, such as DITO, that will uh, benefit from having a more streamlined and more efficient flow of network data. So I just want to say, Jim Kui, I wish I could be in SOPOT, uh, but thank you very much, and I look forward to questions.